The SJ Cam SJ8 Pro is now official in the Philippines and it touts to be a huge improvement over its predecessor, the SJ7 Star. Is it worth the upgrade? So, let's find out. Okay, so before we begin, in case you missed our review video of the SJ Cam SJ7 Star, which that was a couple of months ago, I'll just link it down below and also at the end of this video, which you can watch it in a bit. Now, for the SJ8 series, there are actually three models. There's the SJ8 Air, SJ8 Plus, and the SJ8 Pro, which is this device. So to give you a better visualization of the difference of the three, here's a quick chart. Basically, the difference is the types of camera sensors that they're using. The SJ8 Air uses a Panasonic sensor, while the SJ8 Plus has the Sony IMX117. And for the SJ8 Pro, is the more powerful Sony IMX377, which sports a few advantages, like shooting videos in 4K resolution, up to 60 frames per second. Recording with the SJ8 Pro is a joy as it features a good video quality with great amounts of sharpness, a decent natural colors and contrast, and a minimal amount of blur. Well, it could have wanted a better dynamic range here, but the overall video output is good enough for both action camera enthusiasts and casual users. It also comes with a plethora of features such as a uh, slow mo recording, which converts the video to 1080p 30fps but already in a slow motion version. But the good thing here is you can set how slow the output will be, which you can set it up to 8x or 8 times slower. There's also a burst mode, car mode, and the photo video feature. What really makes this camera stand out from the rest of the series is shooting in 4K resolution. Despite having a limitation of 4GB size or roughly 5 minutes per file, the camera cuts right at the end of the video and connects it to the next footage. So basically, once you edit this on a video editing software, you just drag it on your timeline and and looks like it was stitched seamlessly and there's no cut in the middle of the footages. If you wish to have a longer time limit, let's say 10 minutes per footage, you will need to change the settings to 1080p or even 720p to have the 20 minutes maximum length per file. One thing worth mentioning here is the crop factor of this camera. Now even shooting in 4K, 1080p or even the 720p, all the field of view are the same which is a good thing. Now shooting with the highest resolution can give you the highest quality for this device. But if you want to have that longer battery life when shooting long footages, well, 1080p is the best choice. During our time with this device, shooting continuously in 4K videos took us around 50 minutes before it runs out of juice, while 1080p 60fps is almost around roughly 2 hours. So during that prolonged period of shooting, we noticed that the body of the camera tends to get warm. Now for the photo outputs, we're quite impressed with the contrast and colors, although the white balance tends to get a bit aggressive. It shifts from time to time, but the sharpness and dynamic range are on point. The navigation is quite the same with the SG7 series but there's a button there that lets you switch from a classic UI to SJ Cam UI. So basically the difference of this two is when you set it to SJ Cam, all of the text will have icons. And for the classic, it's just a plain white alt text navigation that you can scroll into. But if you have quite a large fingers, you're going to have a hard time pressing the icons. So the classic version is more of we can say easy mode, which because it has a larger buttons and text. Now down below, you can see that there's a settings to change the video resolution, settings, and modes. Well, there's also a digital zoom feature, which is present on the right side, which is that is the plus and minus icons. And there's also a gimbal control, which we think is an integration for their gimbal products. Other than that are the usual features, such as adjusting the color, audio, metering, timestamp, white balance, and the time-lapse interval. Since this device still uses the same app from the previous version, so it's still Still sluggish and a bit slow when rendering and loading the photos. Overall, the build is sturdy but interesting though that from the previous SJ7, they used a metal build material but for the SJ8 Pro, they're now using a matte finish material. But in results to that, we now have a lighter and a wider action camera. Additional changes here is the tripod mount and it's now built into the body at the bottom alongside with the battery and what's new here is the front display which now shows which settings are you using. If in case you're in the video mode, it shows if the recording is starting and if it's charging plus how many storage left and even 
event the current time. So it changes from modes that you're using. There's also a gesture feature in the home screen. So swiping left and right will show or switch the modes and swiping downwards will show the lock screen toggle, Wi-Fi, FPV, which we're not sure yet how it works. And uh, one notable feature here is the capability to use external microphone, which in this case, you need to get used to a lot of USB type C since the previous version is using a uh, older USB port. And of course, an action camera will not be complete without any accessories. So here are all the mounts included in the package. So overall, the only issue we encountered during the time with this device is charging. We're not sure if it's only our unit, but since the battery is quite hard to remove compared to the previous, again, SG7 Star, most of the time we need to adjust the battery. So when we put up the charger and then remove it and boot it up, it just won't open. But then again, it may be just our unit, so the mileage may vary. The SJ8 Pro is now available via Lazada for about 15,990 which make it a good alternative actually for the already popular action cameras in the market. So overall, the 4K 60fps feature of this device is actually impressive both for photo and video. Even the battery life for recording that huge amount of footage. It's light, it's actually decent, and it can capture pretty well for its price. And that's about it for our review of the SJ8 Pro. If you're interested to grab one, we'll just link it down below for the official store page and if you like this video don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified once we have a new video so once again we'll see you next time